My name is Art Conforti. I'm here with Walter Knoll from Walter Knoll Florist over how many years in business? Well, uh, there's a little debate on that. You know, uh, uh, <laughs> tell us. We, we had docu- we have plenty of documentation that says we were in business since 1883. And in fact, our, uh, our our moniker for years was your personal florist since 1883. About four years ago, uh, a publisher came into St. Louis and wrote a book called St. Louis's Oldest, and they went through and did a book of all the oldest businesses in St. Louis. And she found documentation that we were in business in 1851. So, so anyway, I don't even know how many years that comes out now. It doesn't well, matter. You know, there, there are no business records from back then. You know, 1883, we had a picture. There was a, um, a gentleman named Hawkins who had invented a rifle that was used in the Civil War called a Hawkins rifle. He was a St. Louis and actually in Webster Groves. And I have a picture in 1883 of his funeral of my family decorating his funeral caisson. So, I mean, the horses are there and the casket's there and we're out there applying uh, flowers to it. And uh, so that was April 4th, 1883 was Hawkins' funeral and that was always our start date. But if you look in the background of the picture that we have, which is in the Missouri Historical Society, you can see we have greenhouses and we have boilers and uh, we were active growers at that point but we really have no history back then but you can see you know members of my family from you know 1883 right there you know that's amazing what was that picture that i saw when i was at your place there that you have that big uh, truck was that was that a, a model t well the model t is 1923 model t and we actually have an exact model t like that that's even painted that way that we take on parades but the um, we have we have we have a we have the 1883 documentation 1923 which it's a Model T that was converted to a delivery truck, right? And and then we have a uh, 1920 uh, picture, which shows a, a storefront with uh, my family there, and they look like gangsters. They're wearing uh, you know suits that go down to the ground, and they're wearing hats like that, and uh, and so anyway, uh, that was. Uh, th- those are some of our oldest ones, and so when you were at the store, we had we had super murals made of all those and put on the walls. And I also have a 1943 picture of my grandfather uh, in a in a glass greenhouse. And uh, what I like to point out to people, it says roses, 45 cents a dozen. A dozen. Yeah, it's written right on the glass there. Now we can't get that wholesale no. for one. No, no, probably probably the best price Walter, for Walter, I think these, are, these are some of the things that I love the most about the flower industry and also was how we met so early on. I was just getting into the industry. You were just moving into uh, basically, I guess you said it was at AFS. Tell us about, tell me well, about, the, right before we met with, with Greg and, and George, tell, tell well, me about that story. What, what transpired for you and I meeting was, uh, you know, basically uh, Red Book got purchased by Teleflora and uh, they had a rewards trip which was the first of the giant rewards trip that many of us have been on. And it was supposed to be the Red Book Cruise, but it turned out to be the Teleflora Cruise. And uh, what it what it recently transpired in my world is uh, Greg and, uh, and Mike had invited my brother and I to an executive briefing. And at that executive briefing, uh, we learned about Teleflora, but we basically were meeting with other other florists, and we had never socialized with them. So we were meeting with Chuck and Ann from Ginnans. We were meeting with Dave and Cheryl Costello from uh, Flower Dallas. Cart. Yep. We were meeting with uh, with uh, Charles Kremp Sr. Uh, we were meeting with uh, uh, Harry Stevenson from Stevenson's. And the uh, best letters. Yep, yeah, and and we he did, and and anyway. What was kind of amazing about that, we were at the time on, uh, uh, it wasn't, it might have been FTD system. We had bought it and it was called uh, Data Rose, uh, but it had become uh, Mercury Advantage. And of all those shops there, we were the only ones not on RTI. And, and I remember Harry Stevenson was, uh, was just absolutely, uh, I couldn't turn the guy off. We'd go to dinner and he'd tell me what, what, what a moron we were. We weren't on our RTI, how we do everything right, but we're not on RTI. And, and so anyway, um, I had looked at RTI, and uh, you know, I, I, you know, I didn't think the technology was super impressive back then, but I had to admit that everybody said it worked. And so basically, uh, we came back from the, uh, from the trip, and I called uh, 
I called Marvin Eckert and I said, just bring it. I want the thing. <laughs> and, and we bought it. And so we put in it and, you know, the, the, the data that we learned from Teleflora and then having our TI, it exploded the business. So we probably doubled in size within a year. And that happened to be uh, exactly when uh, Redbook was acquired by Teleflora and we got invited on the Teleflora cruise. And that's where you and I met. We met on the cruise. And you and I both being aggressive marketers and, uh, and, and pushing the envelope as far as anybody could, uh, you and I gravitate to each other. And I remember we spent uh, basically every moment of that trip together and uh, feeding each other, you know. Right, so we'd, we'd be we'd be sitting in the in the lounge, and uh, the the wives would go back saying they saw a show, and you and I were doing notebooks and saying, well, what if we did this? And you know, many many programs were were, were started right then. I think uh, we uh, we came up with helping hands. You know, the uh, the program where we uh, uh, yeah, did a charity cool. to to yeah. to promote us and. In regard in doing that, they get a five dollar cut per order or something, and you get right. other merchants to. Uh, uh, what, what was the one where we had the other merchants give you coupons? Oh, that was Lucky Stems. Ken Young joined us on Lucky Stems in Marco Island. Lucky Stems, yeah, those those were all. So many of those uh, programs that uh, that were early success, you know, uh, all came out of us sitting on that cruise and of course talking to other people that gave us other insight. So yeah. it was just a, a massive information sharing. I remember uh, uh, Chuck and Tammy, uh, my, my brother and my sister-in-law and my wife coming back, we all came back on the cruise and we had we had notebooks full of ideas. You know, we had different new suppliers and it basically changed uh, almost everything about us. In fact, we at that, uh, at that time learned about the study groups and that's when we started making a pitch to get into the 10 group. And uh, which has also been transformative for us. I think study groups are the best thing in the industry. Uh, you know, it was great having those those trips, and it brought everyone together. The en the level of energy that transformed between us. We just kept feeding each other, and what happened was there became they became a core. And I think you and I kind of started that, and then people started just joining us. And uh, other people sat back and watched. Other people waited, but eventually everyone was welcome. But we wanted new ideas. We could only do the same thing so many times, expecting different results. Well. You're exactly right. You know, the, uh, the the theme I always tell anybody, and I imagine a little later we'll talk about some innovations that you and I did, but I always tell everybody, in fact, I found myself in a, in a study group meeting two weeks ago, uh, basically saying that any time you come up with anything new, it's only yours for a few days, you know? I mean, everybody will start trying to do it, and they might even do it better than you because they got to see how you did it, and so I call it running on the treadmill. You're running, and... Uh, there, there is absolutely no plateau that you get to that you made it. You must immediately be pushing for it for the next level and the next level and the next level because, you know, it's a competitive world and everybody's going to catch up to you. You, you right. cannot rest on your laurels at all. Well, there's a lot of new people coming into the industry now. We've got a new younger generation coming in, a lot of DIY people, uh, a lot of a lot of young young energy. And I want to harness that energy. I, I, I want to work towards getting more more groups together and having us meet because you know there was nothing but we didn't have to have an agenda we used to come to sarasota with all the shops we had an agenda but we didn't need one there was more fun going on with the dinners and the nights out after the dinners we all just all we did was just talk and and learn and share and give back and take it up a notch take it back a notch it was what made the industry i i think that's what happened because a lot of people don't know Walt, but we had the websites before teleflora we oh, were doing before. our thing, and a lot of people don't realize that. Well, uh, you know, the, the, in the very beginning, the uh, the wire service websites were pretty marginal. I mean, they become they become excellent now, and uh, they really have. They've come a way. Uh, I mean, it's night and day difference. But back then, if you remember, Greg and they flew us out there to find out what should we do with this internet coming. I'll never forget that meeting in L.A. And we sat there, and, and they were looking for ideas. And what better than to ask the best of the industry, right? They brought all of us into a room. And next thing you know, Teleflora was building a website for the rest of the industry. And, you know, there was our group 
and then there was a Teleflora. We just, you know, our, our, I think our exclusivity set us apart that we can build our own thing, but there's just going to be one in every city. So this way Teleflora can do the majority, and Greg was fine with that. He's like, you take the one, we want the rest, and it was a handshake, and, and to this day it still holds true. So It does, I, and, and, and you know, you talk about the, the, the big websites, you know, obviously, you know, Flower Manager, uh, but... Uh, Flower Manager isn't for everybody because it's it's heavy duty and it's yeah. powerful. Um, Requires you know, a lot to, to run it. Well, it, it takes energy to run. You know, one of the things that we used to do in the beginning and talking to other florists is everybody would think that they just have to get a website. And the uh, the basic premise that I tell people is that the website's like opening a store. It needs a website manager. It needs a merchandising manager. Uh, you might combine these into multiple jobs, but it takes all the care and feeding that you would do to a store. It's another enterprise. You don't just put a website out there and say you're done. So when you get to the heavy-duty websites, uh, they don't do anything for you at all, but you have totally granular control. And uh, as such, I tell people it's a tractor-trailer. So if, if your job is to just go up to the market and get uh, a, um, a, a bottle of milk, you do not want to drive an 18-wheel tractor trailer to go three blocks to pick up a bottle of milk. You would be better on a moped. And so some of the websites are mopeds, some of, the moped, some of them are box vans, and some of them are industrial tractor trailers. And it depends on what your commitment to it is, how much energy you're going to put in it, and what size business you have and what your goals are to decide what the right fit is for you. You know, I was I, I was all out, you know, so I wanted anything and everything to replicate my retail experience on the web, but that's not for everyone. And I learned that as I broke away and, you know, sold off my business, I realized a lot of people are comfortable with, with a medium-sized website, and there's nothing wrong with that. No. It's just a different mindset that I had to get used to because there's, there's a comfort level there. When, when people say, oh, I don't want to be you, well, that's not for everybody. I mean, let's face it. With the pressures that we take on having all the employees, I had 52 employees. What did you have, 120? Or something like that, maybe 140 now. Yeah, but. give or take a few dozen. <laughs> yeah. But it's a different way to run your business, it's like running a tractor trailer, like you said, opposed to a moped. But let's go back to, to the early beginnings, Walt. I mean, back when uh, with these pictures that you'll see there of our sites, um, you know, how a antiquated it seemed. It seemed so basic. Like you saw that little um, tag well, that ran along the top of the website. I was so excited. I, it said Rose Special going across the top of the website. We have we to could, go the way we back. could change it and get the data out. Well, you know, my, my early uh, uh, career, you know, Arthur, I'm, I'm an electrical engineer by training, but uh, that turned out to be a, uh, a software person at uh, one of the computer companies. And, uh, you know, when I was about 23, I started working at a company called Wang Laboratory who was terribly innovative and at the time was a uh, six or seven billion dollar company uh, back in you know 82 83 it was probably the equivalent of being a 15 or 20 billion dollar company today there were 30,000 employees at Wang but you know I was into technology and uh, working pretty hard on it I was a software developer by trade then and uh, you know we were using uh, services that communicated over what was an X.25 network, which was uh, made by uh, BBN, which is the predating of everything. And that's actually what the people at CERN used to turn into the internet. But, uh, you know, at the very first, there were, there were these uh, services like CompuServe, Genie, Bix, um, and, uh, and we uh, came up with the idea. We had started a, uh, a bulletin board to order flowers. It used some software from a company called Galacticom. And basically it asked about 20 questions where, you know, what do you want? And where's it going? And, and we didn't show images because there was no HTTPS back then. It was basically a, like a Telnet interface. It was TTY. Right. And you would give a verbal description of it and the people would say, yes, they want. And they'd go back and forth. And then you'd ask the questions and you'd take the credit card and then you would, you would take the order. And uh, so anyway, we had the Galacticom running and we'd advertise that and we were lucky enough to advertise that in a TV guide with an 800 number to people who hook their computers up. And that was the first day we had a 500 order day and uh, with people using Galacticom. And uh, of course that so did get the- What year was that, Walt? What year do you think that was? It was 81, Arthur. I can't believe that. I so, can't get over that. I thought I was so early, an early adopter back in 1996. Well, there was not the Internet. Internet did not exist back then. It so didn't. So how was, was it that you did that? Well, um, we, uh, we, we, 
we, we played with this uh, Galacticom software that uh, basically lets you put up a information and you could take like orders for books and stuff. And, uh, you know, it, it really was pretty similar to a, a user interface for Mercury at the time. So you remember the old uh, white, looks like a Ford Aerostar Mercury you terminal? The blue, the blue cover? The, you know, and it had the one line LED that you would be able to type on the membrane keyboard. But and you kept typing, went right off the screen. Yeah, well, back then, Arthur, that was basically the, the design that we used for the bulletin board. Instead of saying what's your florist number, we asked who you were. And it was, uh, you know, basically of uh, asking about the flower orders. So um, we decided that um, we wanted to hook our bulletin board up to CompuServe. And CompuServe at that time had 2 million uh, subscribers. And uh, uh, CompuServe, the first time, I, I went and made the pitch for them. And they were uh, they were owned by HR Block at the time. And they were in, uh, uh, well, they were, they were in Ohio. I went there in uh, Columbus, and I, I made the pitch. And they laughed at me. And they said nobody would ever want to use their computer to order things. I mean, they, they literally thought it was funny. And uh, I had my mom with me on that meeting, and uh, I was still working at Wang, so it was a, it was a couple day trip. And, uh, and about six months later, they called back and said that they were considering it and would I hook up to it. And uh, anyway, back then, th this, see, this was a day that you cannot believe because CompuServe had two million subscribers and they had one florist. And uh, they had a monthly magazine and uh, they did an article about us and in one day I had a thousand orders. And uh, uh, I remember uh, we had sent those orders through and the wire services did not get real-time data on what had happened. We had sent them all AFS. And all of a sudden, at the end of that month, you know, I owed AFS maybe $140,000 for orders. Well, uh, next thing I knew, Herman Minders had uh, flown to St. Louis to see what we were. <laughs> What's going Cause, on? Because they were worried about their money, you know. I mean, this was, I mean, how do you have this many orders? And I remember showing it to Herman, and uh, and uh, he was impressed. And uh, and then he actually uh, gave us uh, uh, the data for an electronic directory. Uh, you know, I remember he was sending me uh, tapes off their computer so we could look it up without having to use the book. I mean, remember that using the telephone book to go find the florist? I mean, how, how gross that was. And uh, so anyway, uh, we were on CompuServe for a while, and then uh, we did Genie and Bix. And, uh, and then CompuServe cross-connected to the Internet, and they brought up what they called the Electronic Mall. And that is really very early Internet at that time, and that's the very first time we could do HTTP. And we could get, uh, that was probably circa 90, uh, where there was some semblance. And then the next thing that happened was the Gulf War. And uh, we had had some kiosks that were running at, uh, at, the, at the Army Air Force uh, exchange called AFES, and all of a sudden, you know, the U.S. had half a million soldiers uh, fighting the Gulf War, and it was Mother's Day, and we were getting several thousand orders a day over that. So there was a short time we were probably the biggest florist in the country and uh, doing uh, business. Now, this is pre-knowing what an order gather was, you know, because they really weren't doing it back then, you know. And well, they, were, uh, they were doing through the yellow pages. Yeah, well, that but yeah, that, that was kind of like blasting everybody. But you know, this was a stroke of, stroke of luck because we we met a need where nobody else could. And right. uh, so we'd worked a deal out. This was even pre credit cards being a big deal. They would pay the army, and the army would pay me, and they would take a cut. So okay. uh, because they could they could pay with whatever they got paid for when they were in Iraq or whatever. Right. So. Anyway, uh, that was the very early days of uh, 91, and then we, owned, we opened our first formal website, which we did under noelflores.com, in uh, probably 94, 96. That was our, our website, and we did that uh, using Perl scripts on a uh, little Linux box, and uh, it was running in the flower shop, hooked up to a dial-up line, and we could only have about 30 people in it at a time because that's all the bandwidth there was. And, uh, and you know, we, uh, we were taking credit cards at that time, and uh, we, had, we had a crude interface. Uh, we were still on Data Rose, uh, going into Data Rose. Then in uh, about 96, 97, we got the direct interface to, uh, to RTI, and then we could shoot orders in. And then, 
And then we dabbled with order gathering. Yeah, we had a uh, we had a company that did uh, convention flowers, which we own the name America's Plants and Flowers, and uh, we owned the URL for that. And so um, I did advertise that nationally, and 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 it, it ran for a while, you know. But um, you know that that kind of played out its way, and uh, uh, but uh, we've been doing it, uh, you know basically progressing and then about 96 uh we uh we we came over and joined you on flower manager and uh no 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 96 we met flower manager oh, hadn't happened yet i think i actually i think you're right it was i think it was 2006 yes, yes. it was 96 you and i had just met you were going down to marco or to fort myers and you that's stopped. right oh, we well so we, we were on vacation at sanibel and, and you got in trouble yeah i did because i drove up and saw you and and, 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 and I think you told me it was only an hour away. And uh, so I was gone from my wife and kid for about seven hours that day. What was the pizza place you take me to there? Panificio. Panificio. You call and you have it ready as we get there. It was perfect. I only had limited time with you. You said I could only have an hour or no, two. No, no. You, you took seven hours later. <laughs> yeah. I remember it was driving not... around in that Mercedes. You know what I also remember about that car, Arthur? was uh, you let me drive it and we went back and forth on that stretch to make sure that no cops were there and then then we drove it and you kept it going faster and of course you know the car was you know maybe a hundred fifty thousand dollar car and i don't want to wreck your car but i went through a puddle okay and the car had mud on it and then we went to lunch and you called a detailer while we were at lunch that came and cleaned the car before we went back you remember that? I remember that. Well, it shocked the crap out of me, Arthur. I couldn't believe anybody did that. How know? can you have a dirty car like that? Come on. No, you cannot. No, that car was, was spotless. I still have a picture of us going through the neighborhood together. You were smiling and waving. Yeah. I, I'll send you that picture. I still have it. I remember, so going, to your, I remember going to your house once where they, you, know, you, you lived in a locked neighborhood. Right. And you had a barcode that opened up the gate. Right. And you told me I had to follow you very closely to get through at the same time. And you drew through, you drove through that thing at 50 miles an hour. <laughs> so you and I were driving behind each other at 50 miles an hour, like two feet apart to make it through the gate. We made it. Yes, we did. We made it. Yeah, but, you know, it was funny because we just never stopped talking and innovating and thinking and passing knowledge back and forth. I'd like to see the Internet, the, the industry do this more because... Because of that interaction, constant conversation, it became contagious. Uh, it was 1996 and 1998, well, September, and I'll tell you the real date. They want to say it's the 27th, but Google started in September the 8th. And um, that was the first time there was text-only ads. And if you remember, the ads ran across the top of the page and down the side. The Down the side was um, pay-per-click, and the top was pay-per-impression. I do remember and, that. Arthur, we were advertising on Lycos and all of Lycos, that. InfoSeek, absolutely. Yeah. And then there was Overture. If you remember, Overture managed everything in one place. You can well, do that. Overture is Overture. still around. And, uh, what? Is it? No, Omniture. That's what I was thinking. Oh, yeah. Omniture. No, Overture is what we had to manage. InfoSeek, Yahoo, all of those you can manage in one location. But Google was only text, and it was just starting. And I remember, if you remember, I started that coast-to-coast -coast, um, floral network because I had coast-to-coastflorist.com, and who was it up in? Um, um, oh my gosh, her, her her they had the flower shop in Virginia. Was it Eric? Um, not Lomas. It was. Um, was that Maris? Maris's husband, uh, brother. Yeah. Well, he had coast-to-coast florist i had coast to coast flowers so we, we both needed each other but he had a couple other venues that you know, send flowers today or something yet he gave me coast to coast florist and i had coast to coast flowers it was such a wonderful gift he gave me because now i had both spelling so i can go forward trying to open up a, a, a nationwide coverage and the mistake that florists make are they call these things gatherers walter every flower shop is a gatherer you open your store to gather as many orders as possible. The problem is deceptive order gathering is unacceptable. But order gathering, that, that's, that's the American way, well, right? You and, I, you and I never, never used to use the word order gather. We'd no. say we were aggressive marketers. Aggressive you know? marketers. So, you know, you, you, you try to fill a need. Uh, if, uh, 
if you show better pictures, you know, like, like one of my pet peeves is I think every flower shop has to be able to produce quality images because it's part of what we do. Right. If, if you want to differentiate yourself from everybody, uh, do you really want to have the same wire service images that 300 other florists in the uh, state have? Right. Uh, you all have talented designers. You have the containers you bought. You have the way you do it, the way you curl the ends of the flowers. Show it exactly the way it's going to be, especially with today's consumer. You know, the, the days of doing bright and cheery, uh, where they were just happy with anything, uh, you know, today's uh, millennial and all, um, they think if they don't uh, get exactly what the picture looks like, they think that you were uh, trying to deceive them. Uh, they don't understand your uh, your logistics problems or trying to have it. So having a uh, nimbility, uh, you know, the ability to change your website quickly and make it look exactly like what uh, the products are going to be. Yeah, you know, so in, in our business, uh, uh, we, we work very hard to uh, make sure that they get it. We call it reality flowers, and, and we guarantee that they're going to see you know, exactly. So the, the second designer has to actually have the print from the web and has to look at the flower arrangement next to the finished arrangement and see that it looks like it. And if it's not going to look like it, because let's say you really were out of yellow or something that day, then you need to call the customer and reset expectations. You know, Arthur, you always had the, uh, the moniker, which was always wonderful, which was exceeding expectations. That was absolutely pure beautiful and it's still a good moniker today because you know the customer has an expectation that you're going to deliver their sentiment and you're going to do it well and you're going to carry the torch and trust them and if you don't deliver it at the level that they're expecting then they're disappointed so you know it's it's like you know here at st louis you know i'm one of our most famous citizens of all time was stan musial and Stan Musial had a, a very famous saying that maybe the whole world knows, but it's basically, if you're not early, you're late. There's no such thing as on time. So if you're not exceeding expectations, what are you? Barely minimally meeting them? I mean, is that where you're <laughs> going to build your business? Or, or worse, you didn't meet expectations? So it is, it is, a, it is a, a motto to live by, Arthur. Well, thank you. It was just something that I was driving around thinking, who am I? Who am I? Every order was an expectation, and I always wanted to exceed it just a little bit every day, and that's where it really came from. But today, I think that, we and now something else I want to touch base on. Back when we started, I made a designer's choice, but nobody cared because the images weren't a big deal back then. It was kind of cool to have a nice image that we can make. An no, you're right. Of. Well, they're still valuable, especially on holidays. But you know, in in the early days, the the quality of the image that could be displayed on HTTP was really a low. In fact, uh, if you go back through the history of computer monitors, you go to CGA monitors, they would show sixteen colors. Well, oh, you don't is that get right? yeah. CGA yeah. was sixteen colors, and then right. Right. VGA came out, and you know, VGA standard was six hundred and forty pixels across. You know, Correct. today, right. I mean, nobody isn't showing a thousand pixels, and uh, you know, the CGA was three hundred pixels. And so, uh, you know, the internet speeds were slow. We didn't have the compression that we have today. And so uh, what happens is, uh, you know, if trying to show a, f a full-size image on the internet might have taken on a dial-up modem, might have taken 25, 30 seconds. Yeah. And so you would do what you had to. But today everybody forgets just how, how fast everything is. I mean, right. everybody's got gigabyte speed to their house and the phones are doing gigabyte speeds. I mean, we can show anything. Right, but the, but back then, you know, when I did the the designer choice, wasn't a big deal. But what's happened now, Walt, it's gotten out of control. Because like you were saying, you have the bandwidth to be able to really make that arrangement just like the picture. What I'm trying to tell the masses out there is, let's set the expectation so we can exceed it by stating that this is a product of nature. It's going to have its own look and feel to it. So I understand it's not going to be just like the picture. I've kind of had to go away from that, Walter, because I was stuck in your way of thinking. And, and all of us, we had the people, we had the flowers. I mean, we had more flowers in our shops than a lot of wholesalers had them. So we had the ability to do this. But a smaller shop that's trying to get, these, get by and fill these orders, they're getting frustrated. And what do they do? They throw their hands up and say, I don't want to take any more orders. Now we have florists that don't want to take the greatest opportunity we have, and that's open your store, join Teleflora, and get orders. And now all of a sudden, this is a bad thing. It's a bad thing when the expectation isn't realistic. So we need to get back to designer's choice, 
let's get a price point. And it's the old, hey, Arnie, make it nice. Right. Another $10, $20 would make it nicer? Well, Absolutely. It's very make cool it nice. when you set the expectation value. for that. But... And, 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 I, and I certainly can't argue against that at all. And it's absolutely what we do on, uh, on holidays and Maxima. You know, I, I choose. Uh, There's just too because many SKUs I, out there, Walt. Well, I, I choose to do it a, a certain way because it makes it almost impossible for other floors to compete with me. I mean, well, that's another edge you have. But see, you that, take that's that. always that's always what we, we try to do. We try to find what we can do that's a little different. So, uh, you know, the, the thing that I find on Little Florist, what they can do uh, and Designer's Choice is an excellent product for them to do. But because they're maybe only processing 25 or 30 orders in the day, what happens is the owner can have intimate knowledge of every of every order. And so their systems don't have to be quite in place that they have to be to make sure everything's perfect. But when, when uh, the, uh, the customer calls and asks what the status of the order is, he literally could be talking to the owner, and the owner can have seen it and said when it left. And that is the level of service they can do that you know, a nationwide company can't do right. because they give such personal attention. So there is plenty of room for everybody and everybody can uh, find the niche. It's just whatever you do, do it very well so that you are able to able to defend what you did and, and not have to worry about losing customers. Right. And I think because of the technology we have now, we can accelerate the service part of what we do. I think to me it's more important about being timely and efficient than it is to make that arrangement just perfect if you know how to handle a conversation. But, you know, we did the Yes We Can program in, in 2005. The whole point was to make it happen like instead of getting caught up in all this insignificant details we have to remember the value and the value is we're conveying a message it's not about the uh, every little stem it's about getting the message delivered timely to the right person that's 80 percent of it the rest is anywhere between 20 and 10 percent depending on how you want to weigh that out you are right but it's about it we are the messenger so when i see these flower shops get all caught up in the flowers but they were, now they're 10 minutes late because they had to get another stem or another type of flowers, and that person left. Was it worth it? No. So I just think we need to reevaluate and restructure. This. The industry needs to be on the same page. We need conformity. We need everyone to understand that filling in orders, helping the fellow flowers. Walter, it's the only thing we do that nobody else can do, and Amazon is very, very close. We deliver same day. And I just want to stress that to anyone that's watching this, or any of the new kids coming into the industry, it's the service that people are buying. Your flowers are beautiful. Your designs are excellent. But without the timeliness, if that person leaves their office and those flowers are sitting at an empty desk on a Friday that won't be looked at till Monday, the flowers are worthless. Well, so it, it's even a little more powerful. You're exactly right. You see. You know, I, I normally, you know, if I wind up talking to somebody who's not in the industry, I ask them what business we're in. And they say flowers and beauty and all this stuff. And I say, no, we're into sentiment transmission. So you right. use flowers to convey. But then there's a, a super awesome responsibility that you're given. And, and I give this example generally when I'm doing a, a Valentine's Day interview. And uh, it normally takes the host off, you know, because the host, whoever's doing it, they always want to hear that you raised flowers and they're too expensive. Of course, we never give them that story. Right. You know, we, we tell them flowers are affordable, a good value, and that we offer this personalized service. But, you know, you tell them that the responsibility you have, I say, let's imagine that a couple is going through a rough time and the husband goes to send uh, a flower to the wife and say, I'm sorry. So the reality is that that flower being delivered in a timely manner and conveying that sentiment might change the course of their relationship. It might soften and they might stay together. The flower misses and the guy gal goes home. She decides to hell with this. You actually have the power to completely change somebody's life. Yes. And that, that would be a travesty. And so you, you really have to take the trust that was given to you by the customer to deliver the sentiment seriously and make sure that it's done and that you accurately deliver the sentiment. And then we all know that flowers are almost always appreciated as a gift and they like 
you're amplifying it. It's like you give the sentiment and you light it on fire and it's, it's just flaming. And uh, that's why there are people that are flower people and not. Once somebody starts giving flowers, uh, they're hooked. They, they, they do it forever. It, it, it's, right. you know, it's like it's, it's, it's never a thanks for the flowers. It's like, those are beautiful. Thank you so much. It makes you feel so good. And, it, and, you know, you can send three roses in a bud vase. You can send $300 bouquet. It doesn't matter. The point is to send the sentiment and get it there on a timely fashion. The florist carries a great responsibility. And, Walt, well, this is what I'm trying to educate the industry. I'm trying to bring them back to let's stop with the details on every little flower, every little stem, every little container. It's the timeliness of the message that has to be first and foremost. And after that... Those are the best. Those are most important. You know, Arthur, I'm, when I, was, I got home tonight... And we take our dogs to work. I brought them inside. Uh, I was out getting the mail. I had a neighbor come and get me and uh, give us a thank you note uh, for just how beautiful an arrangement was that it touched the people's heart. And it was absolutely, uh, and, and it kind of shocked me. She came over just to give it uh, to us. And, uh, you know, so obviously the message that she sent to whoever she sent it to had struck a chord and it had worked and she was so happy she wrote us a note telling us how good it was and so that is that is the the, the business that we're in and when you understand that you know um, a lot and, of people and, never know that feeling because it really is special so again with my business being marketing everybody wants to know how many orders how much is going to cost how many orders how much how about the timeliness the follow-up train your staff you know you can ask people the same op same same situation can come up you can ask three people how did you handle it and they'll give you three different answers for example lost order log i was speaking with the flower shop just yesterday and i said to them are you using the lost lost order log you know what they said to me we started using that and we check it every week i said you missed the point if you lost an order a customer said how much is a dozen roses and they said a number and they hung up. I mean, that needs to be fire. It's like, we need to get that person back. And they said, what do you want me to say? I said, did you tell them about the special? What special? The mixed colors for $10 less? I didn't know we had that, but we do now. You know, that, 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 that actually whatever. is uh, a direct training. Uh, we, we don't allow people to just say what a price is for something. Okay. Uh, be, so if somebody it? called up and said, how much is a dozen roses? Uh, you know, the, the, the main thing you have to find out is what's important to them. Uh, you know, is price the important thing? Is delivery important? Is the quality? Is being special? And so, you know, the, the right answer that, that we would give is we'd say we have all kinds of roses. You know, we have roses from uh, very inexpensive in the cash and carry a dozen for $15 up to our super premium 90 centimeter Ecuadorian, you know, uh, whiz bang roses. Remember when we sold epic roses, aren't there? Epic and, six foot. Yep. And was, was that 180 centimeter or something like that? And uh, I'll uh, tell you a funny story about that. But go ahead. Yeah. Well, and uh, at, at that time, uh, you know, you, you find out well what's important to them is is this, is this somebody on a budget that, that wants to deliver it? Uh, is maybe if, they, if they're having trouble with the money, maybe they get a few roses added. Maybe you sell them a bubble bowl with roses. Maybe a cube with roses. Or could you turn off somebody who was looking for the, the greatest possible uh, uh, show they could have by telling them you have these inexpensive roses? You know, you're, you're not trying to be, uh, you know, the produce guy on the corner selling distressed roses. Well, you know, so let, me, you, but, let me speak to that if I may, Walt, because a lot of people by doing that, they'll end up going into a budget conversation. The question that I like to pose next is, what price range are you comfortable with? Because we can get anything, and instead of going into how inexpensive it can be, when I say, what price range are you comfortable with, that opens them up to say, I don't want to spend more than $100. Now you know where they are. Or they might want to say, as cheap as possible. And that's when you say, are you really looking for the budget rose? And you're basically well, but, speaking but, to but them. But I, I, would, I would also add to that, that you know, that conversation is not to tell them, first of all, you don't want to turn them off. But what you're trying to do is establish a dialogue and find out, you know. So does the person have a favorite color? Uh, sure. What, what, so, so anyway, now all of a sudden you're decommoditizing the uh, sale and you're talking about their specific needs. So all of a sudden, you know, you have a rapport with them. Of course, these, this is the old days, you know, when we were, we were doing all this uh, on phone, you know, now... You know, my business is, uh, 
is only about 35 percent telephone. You know, most of it's on the internet. Right. And, and, and what's amazing about that, Arthur, is the uh, you know the, the youngsters. You know, they're they're all on their their mobile device. You know, I mean, we're we're at 50 percent of the internet orders taking place on their phone. Right. But but the uh, but you are well, funny. But, right. but let me say this though, just so everyone that's listening to this, I know they want to say it's one to one, but people that come in through Google Maps are eight to 10 to 1 when people go to maps they're looking for phone numbers and that's what happens when you're looking up a phone a phone number for a shop you get maps that appear and then you click the button and call so truly you're still getting way more phone in orders on maps or sympathy orders too most of the sympathy orders come in over the phone very few people go through the entire process online is what i found from tracking it but you got to know what the source is when you're when you're landing on the the Google local page. Chances are you said phone number for this flower shop. Phone number pops up. You click it, and now it became an order. And you got to watch the. You have to also watch the the abandon rate because if they're calling you on the phone, is that really abandoned or is that just a conversion on the phone? And unless you're tracking your phone numbers like we did, you're not going to ever know that. So you got to think about. The, you know that there's many ways that that answer can come up with different values i said that can be attached to that but you know before we wrap this up i want to just touch base because you brought it up the epic roses you and i you i think sourced them for me didn't you and keto yep we we, we found a uh we, we'd gone down to keto and we'd found uh a grower i think you and i coined epic rose that was just we coined we the name it. but i think you actually discovered where we can get it from yes and uh and uh, we um uh, we and, and actually uh I, I don't know if you remember, but you and I, we actually offered it to all our friends. We know, did. So, so we probably we probably had 60 or 70 floors. I think we created an Epic Road website where you could find who had Epic Roses. We did. Know. Or we used uh, localflowershop.com to, to flag them as well. Yeah, and uh, but you know it was, uh, you know it, it was it was some of our our, our, our fellow flo florists on the same website, but it was uh, some that we had marketed with, you know, and. Uh, we did all the photography, we did all the copy, and we, we, we did everything for them. They, they just had to say, I'll take it. I remember we had, uh, the one picture was Tina in the picture. Yep, know. she was holding the big... <laughs> yeah. So, so the two things I want to say about that. The first and the most value that I got out of that, Walter, was the the um, videos and all the, the PR that I got. As soon as I knew they were coming in, I sent out a press release. Amanda did, as a matter of fact, to all the media stations up and down the the west coast of florida that valentine's morning i think i've got a picture of it we had about five or six stations lined up in our parking lot waiting to see the epic rose come in the media the press that i got for that wall was unlike anything you can't buy press that good and i think sometimes florists forget about the value of making people look because that's almost priceless which Sorry, you and it really wasn't about how many epic roses you delivered. It was really no. that you got other people. Do you remember what a pain those were to deliver? So I, you have to build them on the spot. Yeah. Well, are you? You'd have this vase that went on an angle. You know, like right. one vase to the truck. And, and uh, we put the vase. We lined it with curly willow, and then yeah. we gave the driver the roses. So they actually had to build the arrangement when they got there. But let me tell you the other problem that I had with that wall. One day, I'm waiting for them to come in. Now, just so you know how hard they were, we got 20,000 roses at Valentine's Day. We couldn't get more than 200. And so when you put it in proportion, that's how rare they were to be able to get that rose. But what happens? The first shipment comes in, we're all oohing and on. Now, we take our eye off of it. What did they do on the second one? Well, the, the, the guy's taking the the stems they cut the stems and there goes all those stems they put they cut it in half almost i almost no died. they did that's exactly right the second batch came in short but they still had the great big giant heads that were like almost four they were, inches the pedal count was enormous but yeah. we needed that length we needed the stem length well, just, we, we built all that marketing on the fact they were so tall you know we had pictures of them showing them towering over the girls we had them at the ritz carlton and people were giving away they were 25 dollars a rose and uh Jeez, it was just that was great. But you know, again, it made people look, and that's where the value. That's the value in having your product when it's so pristine. It's not just about what did you pay and what did you get for it, but nobody else has that. If I'm my competitor, 
I'm wondering, my gosh, how did they get all those media trucks in their parking lot in the morning of Valentine's Day? Because you send out press releases, take pride in what we do. We have a great industry. Although I sold out, I can't let go of it. I still have the passion for it. And I still think there's a lot more we can get out of it. If we can get people to remember, I guess, our old values yep. and move it up into today because we need more innovation. We need more technology. And I applaud Teleflora for going so digital and having so many solutions digitally for us. Floors don't realize these things weren't around forever. And yeah. we're very lucky that Teleflora has taken a headfirst plunge into the industry because I don't know what the industry would do without them. Arthur, I'll, I'll give everybody who's listening a, uh, a tip here. So you talked about sending out the press releases. You know, if you send them to the TV stations with a dozen roses. Even better. That will, I guarantee that will get a response. Even they, better. They will yep. all show up. You, that's how you get five trucks to show up the next day. I sent them out, but that's even better. We probably have 10 trucks if I did that. You know, anytime you have anything that you want to get out, that's the best way to get attention to it. Send it with the roses. That's going to bring attention to your delivery, your message, or whatever you're going to do more than your competition. So, again, the best saying that, ever, that I ever heard came from FTD, say it with flowers. I mean, it couldn't be better than that. You know, Walter, we've got enough content. We can we can knock off about four or five of these at one hour each and at any okay. given time. This was not scripted. I mean, I called Walter. I asked him to come on board. We started thinking about what are we going to talk about? What are we going to talk about? We already started talking. Walter, let's just go. Let's just wing it. There's no there's no script needed. So I hope you'll be on some more. But I want to try to wrap this up because I'm sure some people are thinking about um, something else to do. But I've enjoyed this. We got 45 minutes together. And... Uh, well, how many years has it been now? Uh, 30? I was asking Robin, you know, I think it's 34, 35, you know. This, this relationship has been like this since we met, and anybody we, will tell we were you. We were youngsters, you know. We, we used to come to the conferences. We'd all have the meet and greet, and you and I would be off in the corners just sitting there back and forth and back and forth. It was it was nonstop, and it's been a pleasure, Walter. I, I just, you too. I just hope we have another 50 years together doing it. Me too, Arthur. Okay, cool. Thank you for being on this, and I look forward to doing more. If you have anybody else that brings value to these conversations that would like to share a story, and that's open to anybody that would like to send me a message, we'd love to hear from you. Let's get action, activity, and excitement back to sending flowers because it's anything but boring. It's, it's what makes the world go around as far as I'm concerned. Thank Absolutely. you, Walter. Okay. Thank you, Art. Right. Have a good evening.